offering no-cost child care in Jonesboro in Northeast Arkansas. Applications at arearlylearning.org. Arkansas Early Learning is a nonprofit organization. K-L-E-K L-P Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning and happy Monday to everyone out there. Thank you for tuning in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. This morning we have a special treat for you. And this one's, you know, geared more towards the kiddos and, you know, adults like adults alike. Uh, today we have some members from the Arkansas State University Children's Theater um, that is located, is it within the Fowler Center? Yeah, it's in the Fowler Center uh, at Arkansas State University. Okay, uh, we have Mr. Tim Bone, Mr. Mm -hmm. Tim Bone, and Ms. Haley. I'm sorry to get your last name. Haley Scott. Haley Scott. Okay, and thank you all so much for coming out this early in the morning on Monday. Thanks for having us. <laughs> all right, so today we're going to talk about the children's theater what they do, uh, what you can expect whenever you do go for, to their shows, and then we're going to talk about some special shows that are coming up called Ricky Tiki Tabby and Pinocchio, which is going to Pinocchio 3.5, <laughs> which is geared more towards these high-tech kids nowadays, so I'm sure they would <laughs> love that one. But we're going to get into the shows a little bit later, but first I want to have Mr. Tim and Ms. Haley tell a little bit more about themselves. <laughs> Well, I'm Tim Bone. I'm the chair of the theater department at Arkansas State University and uh, the director of the shows this summer at our Summer Children's Theater. Okay. The Summer Children's Theater started in 1995, so oh, for God. 22 years we've been bringing entertainment to uh, children and adults uh, every summer, um, serving thousands of, stu of, of uh, students, children, and okay. their parents and families. And what's really exciting now is we're having uh, kids who grew up coming to this, bringing their children. Um, so we've had generations of, of uh, audiences coming to this. <laughs> All right, that is so wonderful. I'm sure they have lots of stories to tell the children. Like, I remember this and I remember this. Mm -hmm. And now the children are excited to see whatever is currently playing and they can have a similar same experience that their parents had. Yeah, it's a great history. <laughs> that is wonderful. All right, Miss Haley, so tell us a little bit more about yourself and then what role you play with the Children's Theater. Well, I'm a, a student at A State, I'm a oh, theater okay. major, and this summer I'm in the cast of both shows for the Children's Theater. Okay. So what role do you play in the Ricky Tiki Tabby? I keep saying Tabby, Tabby. <laughs> in Ricky Tiki Tabby, I actually play Ricky. Oh my goodness, so what type of costume would you wear? We'll talk about, I'm sorry, I don't want to give too much away. <laughs> we can't give too much away, we gotta go to the show. Okay, but well we will talk a little bit more about the show in the second part of the of the, this show. Mm -hmm. Okay, but well we want to talk more about the children's theater. Um, what, when do they, when do they net, normally start as far as are they held in the summer are they all year round give us a rundown well we auditioned for and were cast in these roles in may i believe mm -hmm. okay. and then we treat each uh each show like a summer session okay so it's like we're taking summer classes oh. and in total if you if you serve in both the cast and the crew you could potentially get 12 hours worth of credit so it benefits you for experience and for credits. Um, so we started when the first uh, summer session started and we built the set really quickly and we started <laughs> rehearsing and this is our third, fourth, third, third week, yeah. I think. Well, this is our fourth week. Fourth week. Okay. <laughs> and so these shows came together very quickly. Okay. It's very impressive what we could do with um, such a short amount of time. But we rehearse every day from one to four. One to four. So we get three hours per day, um, usually Monday through Thursday. Sometimes we have a Friday okay. rehearsal. <laughs> so it's been a really great experience, though. And it's awesome to see how quickly these shows can come together. Okay, so can we talk a little bit more about you? How did you get 
into theater as a major? Mm -hmm. Like, what interests you and in, where do you see yourself going after graduation? Or what are your plans after graduation? It's funny because, well, I'm not from the Jonesboro area. I'm oh. from the Little Rock area. But when I was a kid, I did go to children's theater shows. We had okay. a um, an art center in Little Rock that was geared towards children. And I would go to these shows every year with my class, and that inspired me. I, I was very, very shy, introverted kid, but I would see these people on the stage, and I thought, I want to do that. Okay. And so that's what started my love of theater, and then eventually I saw certain shows that just really inspired me, and I knew for sure I want to do that. I want to make that magic and inspire the next generation. And so um, I came to A-State, I registered in all my classes, um, and it just fell even more in love with theater, okay. with these professors, and with these classes. Um, as far as after graduation, I'll be a sophomore this year, so oh. I still have a oh, while to go. Ago. Sorry, um, but uh, I'm pushing you out the door. <laughs> I, I really, my dream is I would love to work at Disney for the Disney Company. Um, that would be ideal. Um, <laughs> and then in the future, I might pursue acting. I might pursue directing. I'm not sure yet, but um, I just know I want to be involved with theater. I've even considered opening like a children's theater specifically of my own in the future. That's something I'm considering, but I still have a while to figure it out. <laughs> well, you have the personality and the voice. I'm sure children will love you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness, you're so bubbly. <laughs> <laughs> so when you got into theater, did you, are you, do you sing as well? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so um, do you, what advice would you give someone that is looking into you know, some people say, I have an interest in theater, but to actually study it as a major, what mm -hmm. advice would you give someone? <laughs> I would say if it's something you're passionate about, just go for it. Okay. Um, you'll never know until you try. But I mean, studies have shown that people who are in the arts classes in high school or in college, they they do better. They their GPAs are higher generally. Sure. Um, we have a better self-esteem and we can carry ourselves because we have that confidence um, to get in front of an audience yes, and play a different <laughs> character. Um, and then studies have also shown. Um, for the students who are enrolled in classes in high school, their ACT scores are generally higher um, and their grades improve when they're enrolled with dance or drama, choir, anything arts related. Okay. So I would definitely say if that's something somebody's interested in, they should definitely try and go for it because you'll never know until you try. All but right. I recommend it. <laughs> Thank you. That's Mike a great answer. Of, <laughs> Mike can attest to that. She's a dancer and mm -hmm. does some other things. Singing I'm is really enjoying dancing right now. <laughs> I've always wanted to visit the uh, theater or the ballet center and audition or whatever the steps are in order to become a part of those shows because I've actually been to a couple during the summers just to, oh, okay, I'm just as thrilled as the kids are. So it's That's interesting great. to have you as a yeah. guest today. Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> All right, so Mr. Tim, tell us more about how you got into theater and teaching it and, and all this hands-on. <laughs> Well, the theater has been a lifelong uh, joy for me. It's something I have uh, always been involved in, always, always pursued. Okay. Um, but you know, I, I didn't pursue it as a career out the gate. You know, I was uh, uh, into computers and graphic design, okay. and, I, and, I, and I had a whole other career um, that I used to feed my theater habit. It never, it never occurred to me uh, <laughs> to to go ahead and study theater. Um, I had those hesitations that you're talking about, you know, do, do I want a career in theater? And, you know, after the grind, I, I decided, yes, I do, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working to feed this theater habit, why don't I uh, just make that my, my vocation? I always wanted to be a teacher, I'd always been heavily involved in education, okay. so uh, at, a, at a ripe old age of uh, 30, Four, 36, I went back to school. I can't even remember how old I was. Uh, to, to, to get uh, certified and get my uh, MFA in directing and theater. Uh, and I've been teaching ever since. That is wonderful. Uh, and I feel great every day. You know, I love my job. I used to go to work so I could go do theater after work, and now I go to do theater at work. Yeah, that is wonderful. Which, which is terrific. Um, and I always wanted to be a teacher, working with, with students and, um, and children as, as an extension with uh, the Summer Children's Theater okay. is, I think, really important work. It's my mission, you That's know, um, especially in the arts, uh, the, the more it gets uh, stripped away from our public education system and the more funding gets cut, um, the more 
important my mission becomes to, okay. to, to bring the arts to the children in the community yep. and to, uh, to bring an appreciation to it to the young adults we have at the university. Um, really makes my day special. All right. Yeah. I would love to see more and more children get exposed to the fine arts. Um, when I was in school some years ago, I had to take a class. I liked it for that moment, but I don't think I could see myself studying it, mm -hmm. <laughs> studying it full time. But um, I did appreciate it the time that I did take it. And I do enjoy watching plays because I know a lot goes into just people have no idea what goes on behind the scenes in putting on a production of this magnitude. Um, they see the final product and they enjoy it. Product. They have no idea the sweat and tears that <laughs> go into <laughs> right. putting this all together. How many practices do you say um, brings about, I guess, a performance or two performances? Ooh. Well, you know, in the summer we do it very differently. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a great educational opportunity for, mm -hmm. for the students because it's much closer to a professional model where okay. we're grinding away every day and, and uh, it has to go up very, very quickly. Okay. So we only have um, around 15 rehearsals before <laughs> performance. Um, during the school year, we, we, we do probably double that, yeah. you know. Uh, so, so the work is much more intense in the summer. It's, it's much closer. It's much closer to the professional model, you know, where they, they have to. You go to work, you get your job done, and you go home. Okay. Um, so, uh, it's a great experience for them, and also the exposure to theater for young audiences. Okay. So there's a huge market for this. This is big business. Really? This is. Well, she's talking about going to work oh, at Disney. Not, That's okay. the whole thing, you know. Um, but there are a lot of theaters that service young audiences. Okay. And especially um, young actors fresh out of college, there's a lot of work opportunities there. So I think it's, it's also great training for them professionally to learn how to do this mode of theater okay. uh, and to perform for this kind of audience, which is the most critical audience you'll ever have. Kids are pretty honest. If they're, if they're bored, they let you know. Um, ad oh, adults are generally more polite. Yeah. Uh, so it, it is the most critical audience you'll have is, is these uh, children in the theater. So you got to bring your A game. It's not easy stuff. It's, it's I think, if anything, more difficult to uh, entertain uh, 300 children. Oh, <laughs> you know? I can't so, even imagine. Would you ever be an advocate, I guess, for other performing arts departments, such as dance? Oh, certainly. We actually just hired a, a dance professor. We're adding um, oh. dance to our curriculum in the theater department. Uh, we've added uh, an emphasis in musical theater. We hired a full-time dance instructor. Oh my and so we're offering three dance courses starting in the fall. Wow, look at that. There's still a lot of seats available in introduction to social dance, uh, if you want to take that. So, social dance? <laughs> Yeah, like ballroom dancing, partner dancing. Okay. Wow. Um, I remember we had that one guest. Um, he came and taught us salsa. It was more like a community service event that he mm -hmm. came to the Fowler Center with his partner and did one-on-one -on -one training and stuff like that. So that's interesting. That's awesome. I may have to look into that. We'll talk after the show. <laughs> yes, <right. laughs> Arkansas State is growing by leaps and bounds. Like every department is constantly evolving and for the better, like yeah. adding different programs that are beneficial for the students that are beneficial in this changing world. Um, everything that you offer at Arkansas State is preparing students for the most part to for what they're going to experience in the real world once they, you know, leave the, the last nest of their life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, okay, now real life really begins. <laughs> time to get a job. <laughs> um, and my most students, if they take advantage of all that Arkansas State has to offer, they will be equipped enough to at least get started in life. Mm -hmm. So you're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We're speaking with Mr. Tim Bone and Ms. Haley Scott from Arkansas State University and they are here discussing the Children's Theater and I promise we're going to get to this play, the <laughs> plays that are coming up. I just wanted to get more background information about you all and so the people can get to know who you are, what to expect, and more about the children's theater and what it has to offer. Okay, so the play that is coming up, first one, Ricky Tiki Tabby. Is it the first one for the summer? Yes. Okay, so let's go talk about the press release the press re there was a press release release. <laughs> I'm sorry. Stop. Um so let's go through the press release and talk about some of the information. That was given to the public. 
um, the opening production of the 2017 Ace State Summer Children's Theater season starts Wednesday, June 21st. So I guess that's the first day of this play, Ricky Tiggy Tabby. Um, the 24th season of Children's Theater at Ace State will open with the Garden of Ricky Tiggy Tabby by Y. York, adopted from the story by Rudyard Kipling. So can you tell us more, give us more background about this story? Well, the story is about a little mongoose named Ricky who is found, he finds himself in this garden, he gets washed into this garden and is met with all these unknown creatures. Okay. So there's a bird named Darzy and a muskrat named Choo Choo huh. and a snake, uh, a cobra okay. named uh, Nog. And so Ricky has to learn how to work with these other characters and how to overcome this bully Nog and so we really focused a lot about um, cooperation and okay. teamwork um, and so the kids will definitely learn these skills about how to overcome a bully um, oh, wow. through these very lovable funny characters. <laughs> okay. It's a very sweet funny and genuine show. It's not we don't talk down to the kids. We um, the show isn't super over the top and cheesy and ridiculous. Okay. It's very practical and very genuine, um, and it gets the messages across. But it's not like we are talking down to the kids and making them feel inferior. And so a lot of times with children's shows, it is very cheesy yeah. and a lot of bathroom humor and things that aren't really relevant. But um, this show is, it's great. And it's been a joy to work with. The script is great. And Tim is a wonderful director. <laughs> I always enjoy working with Tim. Um, but it's a great show and I think kids can learn so many lessons from it and they'll also be very entertained there's okay. a lot of very funny moments some scary moments oh. um it's got a bit of everything and the costumes in the set are beautiful it's all very bright very exciting and um i think it's something they'll really enjoy now is all of the work the set costumes makeup all of that is it all done by students and faculty Everything is designed by the faculty mm -hmm. and then um, students assist with it. We had one student this year assist our um, costume constructor, Claire, okay. and so she designed everything but then he assisted her in constructing them. And then um, Jeff designed the set and then there were I think maybe seven of us that are enrolled in the tech aspect of okay. the theater and we also meet every day just before the acting part and so I would be there from 9 to 12 building sets and painting and doing things like that and then I would have a lunch break and then come back and okay. act um, but Jeff designed everything and then he and the rest of us would build it and so we would just carry out his vision okay well and we do have students involved in every aspect of production so we do, we do have in previous years we've had students design okay. this year we just we have a student sound designer Peyton Miller is designing uh, all the sound oh. and uh, Laura Martin is assisting on lights yes. um, so we, we try and uh, bring students in at every level. I've got, also got an assistant director this summer, uh, David Norris, who's okay. uh, been working really closely with the actors and teaching the songs mm -hmm. and, and, and uh -huh. working with actors um, and helping me to put the production together. He's really interested in directing. Um, so uh, he got an opportunity to come and work in that capacity over the summer. So it, it's our goal to, to lift up the students and let them do as much as uh, they're able to do you okay. know, in the summer as much as we can push them forward. That's the idea. You know? Okay. Now, before the show is over, do you think we can get a little bit of sam a little sample of maybe you singing or reciting maybe one line or something? We can wait till later in the show. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just want to give the people just a little sample of what they can expect so they can hear your beautiful voice. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about. I don't want to run out too much time, but because we're going to get ready to come up to a break soon, but let's talk about some of the other actors in the play. You may have mentioned or performers. What do you? Please tell me what the etiquette here. Actors, performers. <laughs> I just want to make sure that I'm, you know, being peaceful. I think either is yeah. fine. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Either is fine. Okay. Um, so the performers include Haley Scott, who is here from North Little Rock, as Ricky, Samantha Dunav Dunav Danavian, Danavian mm -hmm. from Tuckerman as Darcy, Irene Taylor from Birdtown. Where is Birdtown? In Arkansas? It okay. is in Arkansas. Okay. Yeah, I don't know where. Okay. It's Teddy. 
Hannah Martin from Blytheville as Choo Choo, mm -hmm. <laughs> and Jackson Wu from Taipei, Taiwan. Oh, it's not Nog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now can you give us a little breakdown of each one of these characters? Sure. Um, well, okay, we cover. I'm sorry. We're gonna get ready for a break. I don't want to <laughs> get run out of time to get cut off. <laughs> so we're gonna take a break here shortly. Um, when we come back, though, we're gonna talk about the different characters and just give you a little bit of background. We, we really want you to go and see these plays, so <laughs> we can't give away too much information. Um, but I promise you, we'll give you some tidbits enough to tease you. So you can put on your calendar and we'll make sure to give you all of the dates and times so that you can take your children out, nieces, nephews, whoever you want to take. Take the whole family. <laughs> These are family oriented events. So again, you're speak we're speaking with Mr. Tim Bone and Ms. Haley Scott from Arkansas State University. We're discussing the children's theater. We're going to take a quick break. So please stay tuned and we'll be right back after these announcements. Listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. Wives, do you know how to really respect your husband? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. We've heard more than once that men crave respect, especially from their wives. But I think it's important that we define what sort of respect men are looking for. So women, here are some respect needs of men. First, respect his judgment. Men crave to know that their wife deeply respects the things that make up his judgment, his knowledge, his opinions, and his decisions. Second, respect his abilities. This means letting your husband solve a problem and fix what needs fixing without interrupting or trying to take over. Third, respect in communication. Choose your words wisely to be sure you're building your husband up, not tearing him down. Remember, your family first. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K N O M E G A 1908. Com. The Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated was established on January 1st, 1977, originally serving Blytheville, Arkansas, and now serving Jonesboro, Blytheville, Osceola, Marion, and West Memphis, Arkansas. Today, the chapter continues to make an impact by focusing on Alpha's national community outreach initiatives such as My Brother's Keeper, A Voteless People is a Hopeless People, Go to High School, Go to College, Project Alpha, Boy Scouts, and the March of Dimes. The Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is committed to Alpha's mission of developing leaders, promoting brotherhood and academic excellence, while providing service and advocacy to the community. More information about the Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is available at MOL Alphas on Facebook or via email at molalphas at gmail.com. The Epic Center, located at 1899 Hasbrook Road, County Road 333, is Jonesboro's newest venue for entertainment for the entire family. They offer an auditorium with theater-style seating for up to 1,100 guests, a large stage, professional lighting and sound, dressing rooms, concessions, and more. Available for weddings, concerts, pageants, birthday parties, showers, and more. Booking and other information is available at Epic Center Jonesboro on Facebook, epiccenterjonesboro.com, and at 870-530-5841. From the KLEK Community Calendar, OESPHA, Eliza Murphy, number 395, presents Fish Fry, Saturday, July 29th, 2017. Plates will include two pieces of fish, spaghetti, slaw, bread, and dessert. This will take place from 11 o'clock a.m. until 3 o'clock p.m. at the E. Boone Watson Center, 1005 Logan Avenue in Jonesboro. More information is available at 870 919 six six three 
four. Did you know KLEK has a brand new streaming app? That's right, you can listen to KLEK 102.5 FM anywhere in the world. The app is available for all Android phones and tablets, as well as iPhones and iPads. Just search your app store for KLEK and download the KLEK app for free today. And don't miss a beat of the education, entertainment, and empowerment on KLEK 102.5 FM. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right, welcome back to Community Conversations. Uh, we're speaking with Mr. Tim Bone and Ms. Haley Scott um, from Arkansas State University. They're here discussing the A-State Children's Theater and the plays that are coming, uh, the first two plays that are coming so far. Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting tongue-tied. <laughs> uh, before we went to break, we were uh, introduced the... Um, characters in the play. I'm sorry, I'm getting that wrong. The characters in the play, and I wanted Miss Haley and Mr. Tim to give us some more background on the characters, but not give away too much about them because we still want you to go to the play so that you can meet them for yourself. <laughs> well, we covered Ricky a little bit. Ricky is the baby mongoose who finds himself in the garden, and Ricky is very excited and very energetic and happy about everything. Okay. Um, sees no wrong in the world oh. um, I think the script says has the confidence of youth mm -hmm. and I liked that a lot okay. and so he's a lot of fun to play because he's so happy and so energetic okay. um, and then Darcy is a diva she's a bird and oh. she thinks the entire garden is all hers she doesn't <laughs> like sharing um, and she can be a little manipulative to get okay. her way okay. um, and then we have Teddy who is what the characters refer to as a human pet and so all the other characters are, are animals okay. and so they see this human as their slave and their pet um, much like how some of our pets might see us yes. um, but so it's very I'll, I'll let you guys see it when you come see the show but it's it's fun how we contrast the animals and the human okay. in the costumes and in the physicality it's, it's very it's it's fun okay <laughs> um, but you guys get to see that for yourself okay and then we have Choo Choo or Chuchandra the muskrat um, who's very timid and afraid of everything kind of like Piglet from Winnie the Pooh okay. but he's, he's very funny very funny um, there are a lot of really funny moments uh, with him being scared of everything. Okay. And then Nog is the cobra who's the bully of the garden oh. and is out to get everybody. They all have to stand up to Nog. Okay, when we were talking off air, you said this is, is it derived from the Jungle Book stories? Like, how, what, in what relation or what relation does it have to the Jungle Book? It almost seems a little similar, even though the animals are different minus the cobra. Well, you know, Rudyard Kipling uh, was actually grew up in India, okay, and um, he lived the life that the, the, t this Teddy kid uh, is oh, living, you know, okay. living in India, um, growing up there, and he wrote these the Jungle Books, uh, or like reflections of his youth, and you know, stories okay. he imagined that the animals were living through, and all this, um, and uh, it it varies pretty wildly from the source material. The source okay. material is about Teddy the boy okay. and all the animals trying to protect uh, Teddy where this play which is an adaptation by Y York okay. really centers on the animals okay. and their relationship and, and t Teddy the boy um, is sort of ancillary to the story you know he, he brings them food and um, is is the reason they're in the garden but not not the reason for the story. The story okay. is about the animals Stories rather than about, about the, the boy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, setting up that world where it's uh, the animals are normal and the human is the invader okay. uh, is, is really what we're trying to set up, you know, in, in the play. Um, and there's a lot of humor in that. Okay. Um, and because we want the audience to associate with the animals because okay. that's where the story lies you know not not with the human okay. so the human is other in this story okay which, uh, <laughs> we we've had a lot of fun with and it's really exciting to play with the ideas of, of, of scale and uh, what do animals hear when humans talk and, okay. and things like this you know so um i i think it's a pretty delightful adaptation okay we watched the movie the 1976 uh, chuck jones movie mm -hmm. um in one of our first rehearsals. There, this is actually a movie as well. There's a movie version? There is a movie version. There's a couple of them. Um, 
and it's, it's, it's quite frightening and dark, and oh. the snake is threatening the child's life, you know, desperately, and all this kind of stuff. Oh my. I remember having nightmares about it when I was a child, uh, but this is very, very different. Okay. It's, it's uh, totally about those animals uh, connecting and working together to keep the garden safe from Nog. That's you know. wonderful. So the yeah. children can are going to be entertained but educated at the same time, mm -hmm. um, and hopefully they do walk away with some teachable. Mo they walk away with some things that are teachable moments. Maybe the parents that bring them can see, can recognize those teachable moments. I'm sorry, and once they get home on the ride home, they can talk about. Okay, so what did you think about this aspect, or what did you think about how this character? reacted to what they said and you know things of that nature so I really hope that it brings about more conversation that's I love productions or anything that's geared towards children that can also help them engage in conversation with their parents or other whoever the caretaker is in their life <laughs> exactly you know to me that's the role of art in society is to, to make us think and examine our own situations okay. um, and maybe make a difference you know uh, okay. if, if we could if we could do something good and make you laugh uh, <laughs> we've had a good day Alrighty. You know. So with the uh, character, the cast of the show, would you say that the character that they're playing is anything similar to their personality or did each person have to really pull from a different place to play these different roles? Hmm. I think there might be some aspects in each of us. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson is definitely not evil, um, <laughs> but... <laughs> But he's a great mover. You know, he he's is. a great dancer. He's got that that um, rubbery spine like a snake. You know, he can move that way. <laughs> okay. You know, that that that, that, help, that makes the casting him pretty easy. It's like, okay. yeah, I can see him moving like a snake. <laughs> you know, um, and in a lot of cases, they, these characters are opposite. Like Sam uh, Danavian, who's playing Darcy, is anything but a diva. You know, okay. she's in jeans and t-shirt, Carol. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we've got her all decked out. Um, okay. So, uh, but there, there's there's got to be an element there when you're casting someone. They have to be able to get there. They have yes. to be able to do it. And uh, I think you're you're hearing the mischief and you're hearing the the interest in Haley's voice. Yeah. So you know you can see why we picked her for Ricky. <laughs> um, there's something of it there. You know. And I think that from an outside perspective, you know, I'm just a watcher of movies and arts and all of that. To see an actor or actress play a role um, and play it and convey it to its fullest, it's like you don't want to always cast someone that already exemplifies those traits. Mm -hmm. You want someone that's a little more to the other side because you know that their performance is going to be a little more genuine, a little more, they're going to push themselves mm -hmm. and go to a place that they probably thought I would never go to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they're going to give you the best performance they can because it's not something that they do on a regular basis. Like it's right. not just a part of their everyday life personality, you know, who they are. So, all right, I can't wait. Are there gonna be any video, um, any videos available or any snippets available after the show? Well, they're working on uh, a little teaser trailer right now okay. that should be available. We'll post that to our Facebook page. I will and definitely to the for that. Page. We do that for all of the shows, so. Um, they do a great job with that. So they, they have uh, some interviews with uh, okay. the cast and some of the production crew, and then they, they have some B-roll of uh, rehearsal, okay. and so you can see some of the stuff going on. I would love to see <laughs> that. And, uh, so let's hear a little bit more about the show. So let's get into the dates of mm -hmm. this show. Okay, again, this starts on June 21st. This is the Arkansas State Theater Presents, a 2017 Children's Theater's production theater production, The Garden of Ricky Ticky Tabby by Y. York, adapted from the story of, by Rudyard Kipling. Okay, June 21st, June 22nd, and June 23rd. Now the times, the first show is always the same at 10 a.m. On the 21st and 22nd, This it starts at 2 p.m. And on the 23rd, it's at 7.30 p.m. Yeah, we have two shows done okay. every day. So okay. every on, Mon on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday we have a 10 a.m. show, okay. and then we have a 2 p.m. show on Wednesday and Thursday, and then uh, we do one show at night on Friday night. We do a 7:30, in hopes that some of the parents who maybe couldn't make it to the daytime shows can get there. So 10 and 2 on Wednesday and Thursday, 
and 10 and 7.30 on Friday. So is there anywhere where the audience can go and save this flyer or even tag someone in this flyer that may have not heard this interview? Um, yeah, it's it's on our webpage. Um, it, and, or you can go to tickets.astate.edu and they'll have all the information there as well. And what's the webpage if you don't mind? It is tickets.astate.edu. Okay. And the Facebook page? Um, it is uh, East State Theater. Okay. So. East State Theater, okay. East State Theater, yeah. And I have a cop. well, I said copy. I have a picture of the flyer in my um, camera roll, so oh, I'll great. make sure to save. And I'll make sure to share on our different platforms as well. Fantastic. Definitely help get the word out about the show. We want as many people, we want the house to be packed. You know? Well, I, I would really recommend <laughs> that um, you get your tickets in advance and okay. get reservations because we sell these out pretty regularly. We have busloads of kids coming in from all the daycares and preschools and all that. Um, so these sell out pretty quickly and also if you get your tickets in advance, they're, they're a little cheaper. You can get them $5 in advance cool. if you get them at the door and they're 7 That is wonderful. So, so come on everybody, go get your tickets, go online. There's any way to purchase tickets in person? Yeah, you can go to the uh, Convocation Center box <laughs> office. You can walk in there and uh, purchase tickets, or you can just buy them over the phone. You can call 972-ASU-1 or that uh, website I mentioned earlier, tickets.astate.edu. You can buy them online. Okay. But well, when I post this flyer today, the information is on the flyer. So make sure, sure you, you read and take notes of the phone number and ways to purchase tickets. Um, we want everyone to go out and enjoy the show. I mean, there's so much to do this summer to keep the children busy. They need to stay busy. They need to have a little fun. They can have fun and be educated at the same time. As um, Ms. Oh Lord, Ms. Brandy from the the library, the public library, she always says, Fun education. Fun <laughs> <laughs> well, the kids have such a great time too. There's nothing like being in that room okay. with 360 people uh, watching this show um, live. It's, it's an experience you can't get with a movie. You know, um, because it, there's a transaction, you know, the audience and there's audience interaction with the oh. actors, the actors are out in the audience, they're talking to the kids, you know, so it, it isn't passive okay. entertainment, you know, they're, they're part of the show. It's not um, like you're just on stage and the kids are hearing and like, that's it. You're no, we try and blur that line. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because um, yeah. um, they're going to blur it either way, so we might as well be in on the game, right? Okay, let's just all join in. <laughs> Have you ever had a moment, Ms. Haley, you're, you know your lines, but for some reason, at some moment, you blunder. You either laugh or, oh my God, I forgot my line. <laughs> like, have you ever just had a moment? You're like, oh my God. <laughs> I probably have in the past. <laughs> okay. I've been doing theater for quite a few years now, and there's definitely been moments where sometimes you just get caught up in the moment and you think, when am I? What's my line? But I mean, it comes to you. We we do rehearse so much that it it's it comes naturally. Okay. So, but there have definitely been times when I've been you know dancing and I'm like, what's the choreography? What's my next? <laughs> but um, it gets to the point if you work it enough that you don't even have to think about it. It's okay. just it's like second nature. It just keeps coming. <laughs> so do you ever you and some of the other castmates or your classmates when you're working on a project? Do you ever see each other in the, at the student union and you just start spitting lines or doing things? Like Definitely. We <laughs> we look pretty crazy if we go go somewhere to eat or go to the student union and we're just running lines back and forth to get that extra rehearsal in. Or sometimes we're by ourselves and we're just talking to ourselves. Um, Jackson really cracks me up because uh, one time I walked into the green room and he was sitting there eating lunch and he um, he was trying to run the scene but I wasn't in there and it was our like two person scene and so he was doing my lines too but in a Mickey Mouse voice <laughs> so apparently Jackson either thinks I sound like Mickey Mouse or Ricky sounds like Mickey and so he was doing a two person scene by himself <laughs> So anybody not in theater would think we're pretty crazy. I mean, we are, but um, <laughs> more entertainment, I guess. Okay. It's kind of a compliment if you're reaching for Disney. Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> you have to be spontaneous. Um, and think off the cuff and ad-lib. Have you ever had to ad-lib? 
I don't think so. Okay. We're we're usually kind of discouraged because we need to stick to what the the playwright had uh, intended the scene to be. Um, I don't I don't think I ever have. Okay. But <laughs> there have been instances where people have I've been in shows where people have done that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my. But the problem with that is sometimes it, it would throw off your castmates okay. if you say something that <laughs> wasn't originally in the script. But oh, wow. anything to get back on track. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh wow. So again, that is Ricky Tiki Tabby's June twenty first. 22nd, 23rd, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. and then 7.30 p.m. on the 23rd. Tickets are $5 in advance and $7 at the door. And there are various ways that you can get your tickets. So now before we run out of time, we want to make sure we give enough time to Pinocchio 3.5. And this one is by Eric Cope. 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 Okay. Eric Cope. So please tell us about this story. Well, this is a modern adaptation of the Pinocchio story. Um, instead of a, a toy maker, there's a computer magnate um, who wants a child and uh, uses his entire fortune to invent a robot, a lifelike human oh, wow. boy that he can call his own, <laughs> Pinocchio 3.5, um, because the previous versions didn't work. So okay. But, but 3.5 did. Um, wow. <laughs> and that, then, uh, but it's set in a modern world, so he's dealing with technology, he's dealing with the distractions of the modern world, the mall, consumerism, uh, and uh, I don't want to give away all the surprises in it, but it, it, it parallels the story of Pinocchio rather than parroting it. So it, it, it does a lot of the same things, where okay. he's tempted, by the other kids and lured into uh, doing work and all these other kinds of things and learns his life lesson uh, okay. to become a real boy. So um, I, it's, it's really delightful, it's funny, it's touching, it's got everything that Pinocchio has, but it, uh, yeah, I think it's a little bit more uh, relatable to a contemporary audience. I was looking know? at the first, the name, <laughs> and mm -hmm. of course it's, the name, it says Gil Bates. Gil Bates. <laughs> and of course they'll put you in the mind of Bill Gates. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. change the letters around. Gil Bates has the greatest software company on earth, but there's still something missing in his life. Children. He builds a robot companion named Pinocchio. But this mischievous mass of mis <laughs> microchip <laughs> <that's cute, laughs> is led into a consumer frenzy. What follows is a wacky retelling of the 19th century classic about what it takes to become a real human being. Wow, so that's going to be something to look out for. And this play starts in July, mm -hmm. July 26th, 27th, and 28th. So tell us about the actors. Is, is the same actors in Ricky as in Pinocchio? Most of them. I think there's, um, Samantha isn't in Pinocchio, but um, our assistant director David yeah. is. And so I think everybody else is the same. Yep, so we have a really similar company, so we, we like to use the same people as much as we can in the okay. summer, get some consistency and get them working together. Uh, um, so the second show, like you said, uh, Sam is not in it, but then David, who's the assistant director, is going to step in. He'll okay. be playing Gil Bates. Uh, <laughs> so uh, these, they're, they're, they're comfortable with each other, and they're going to be able to just jump right in and get to work. Okay. Uh, now with this play, okay, I wanted to ask earlier, when you're getting ready for a production, is it treated as a class, so you're spending your time basically learning about the production, learning the parts, or do you have to also attend class on campus and then go to practice? Well, for the summer, these are our classes and they're okay, treated as classes. Okay. But for our normal season, we, a lot of us have, um, you know, up to 18 hours yes. of other classes in addition to these rehearsals. Okay. And so we just have to really manage our time well okay. <laughs> and make sure we can get all of our homework and other duties in and some people also work and so you have to wonder like when do we sleep but <laughs> that's when you know theater majors really <laughs> must have good planners because um, we manage all of our classes sometimes work schedules and then also have either three or four hours of rehearsal every night that's okay. something that we see across the arts too mm -hmm. the same thing is true with music students and, and students in studio art is they have all their classes but then they've also got three four hours of practice or uh, studio work that they have to do or rehearsal in the case of the theater students and dance students um, so uh, 
it's it's a different kind of commitment that you have that you have to have. It's wow. it's a it's a full day. You know, they live at the Fowler Center when they're in a show. You know, they're there all day for classes and they stay all night for rehearsal. Um, so you get you get to be close. You get to know each yeah. other really well. And uh, that also it shows like the impact of the arts. Just like in high school, you know how I said that you know students involved in the arts generally have higher GPAs and test scores. And I think that could be part of the reason is they they learn they have many responsibilities and have to decide how to manage their time okay. and how to um, be the best that they can be at each of their responsibilities. You have to be very structured and very detail-oriented and yes. <laughs> uh, very disciplined. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and in many ways, they're a learning cohort, too. You know, they're, they're in these classes together, they're in the trenches together, okay. and they're in rehearsal together, you know, and they hold each other responsible for getting this work done because you're letting somebody down if you don't do your work. That's you know? right. All right, so we're going to get ready to take another break. This one came upon us. I'm enjoying the conversation. When we come back, Miss Haley is going to give us a little sample of something. It may not be from Ricky, but she's going to give us a sample of something to share her beautiful voice with you all. So please stay tuned, and we'll be right back after these announcements. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. My definition of credit card abuse is using credit to buy things that you don't have the cash for. Unfortunately, we usually don't realize we've abused credit cards until we begin missing payments, default on a card, or worse. However, if you learn to recognize the warning signs, you have a chance to change your spending habits before you do real damage to your finances. Here's what to watch out for. Your credit cards are always at or near their credit limits. You should never be using more than 50% and ideally no more than 30% of your available limit on any credit card. You can only afford to make minimum payments on your cards. This will result in you getting deeper and deeper into debt as your money goes toward interest payments. Your credit card balances continue to increase even when your income decreases and especially when it goes up. This is a major sign that you're headed for financial disaster. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization dedicated to uncompromising commitment to communities. Service, leadership, empowerment. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. Hello, this is your girl, Allie J, and I want everyone to join me for Kick It With A Cancer. My birthday bash going down June 23rd at Legends Barbecue Smokehouse, 1025 West Johnson Avenue, across from Riceland Foods in Jonesboro. This party is going to be an all-ages affair from 7 to 10 o'clock p.m. And I'm letting all cancers in free until 8.30 p.m. with ID. Music by DJ Mr. Chu. To celebrate my birthday, I'm going to make it easy on your pockets, too. Just $5 to get in for adults, $3 if you're 13 and 17, and kids 12 and under get in free. I told you it's an all-ages family affair, and you know you want to be there, right? And just because it's my birthday, I'm giving away presents to some lucky guests. So come kick it with a cancer June 23rd at Legends Barbecue Smokehouse, 1025 West Johnson Avenue from 7 to 10 p.m. This is a KLEK fundraiser. Arkansas Early Learning is accepting applications right now for child care. We have locations all across Northeast Arkansas. Applications at arearlylearning.org. That's arearlylearning.org. Right here in the community at no cost. Arkansas Early Learning offering kids a head start.
Arkansas Early Learning is a nonprofit organization. Starks Auto Plaza, your pre-owned superstore, is a longtime supporter of KLEK. 2829 Red Wolf Boulevard, Starks offers clean, reliable vehicles of all makes and models. Starks also offers no-hassle pricing, friendly service, financing options with approved credit. At Starks, you're always family, and our motto is, we never say no. 870-203-9980. StarksAutoPlaza.com. When a woman gives her all to a boyfriend, she is hopeful about the future. Marriage was in her future plans until she received some shocking news. Now with her dream shattered and life altered, she has to pick up the pieces and move forward. It was in this experience that she realized that love has no protection. KLEK 102.5 and Massey Production presents the inspirational gospel stage play, Love Has No Protection, a story that would inspire you, renew, and reaffirm your faith. Featuring performers from all over Arkansas, Texas, and Louisiana, 7 p.m. Saturday, June 24th at the Arkansas State University Student Union. Tickets are $10 in advance, $15 at the door. They can be purchased at KLEK, Cool Cuts, and online at www.klekfm.org or by calling 870-277-1080. Bring the entire family Saturday, June 24th to the Arkansas State University Student Union to see Love Has no protection the inspirational gospel stage play 7 p.m this event is a klek fundraiser just added a special three o'clock p.m matinee show that's right now it's going to be two shows three o'clock p.m and seven o'clock p.m the hit gospel stage play love has no protection coming to the asu student union centennial hall june 24th Don't miss it. House of Details, located at 3217 Herb Street, Suite C, is a proud supporter of KLEK, offering detailing on any type of vehicle, waxing, clear coat protection, basic wash, hand wash, shampoo, interior cleaning, buffering, headlight restoration, pickup, delivery, and more. With a motto of, anything mean, we can clean. Details available via Quentin Bogard at 870-273-5187. House of Details on Facebook and houseofdetailsjonesboro.com. Do you like the music you hear on KLEK 102.5 FM? Do you like the educational programming that we provide? Do you like the service we provide to the community? Do you like having a station to finally call your own that represents you? If so, please stop by or call any of our underwriters or sponsors that you hear on KLEK and tell them thank you for their support. The support of our underwriters and sponsors is vital for us to stay on the air. So be sure to let them know that you thank them for their support. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right, welcome back to the last segment of Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. And I know I put Miss Haley on the spot, so <laughs> if she can't come up with anything right now, I don't want her to feel pressured. Uh, but she just has such a beautiful speaking voice, I can imagine what her singing voice is like. <laughs> so I just want to hear a little something. Well, I don't know if there's any songs that I could do without doing some kind of copyright infringement or something, but I might be able to give you a couple of little snippets from some of my lines in the show, some monologues. That'd be wonderful. But no spoilers. No spoilers. (laughs) So you can get a little sample of what a mongoose might sound like. Okay. (laughs) Well, I'm no stranger. I'm Ricky Ticky Tavi. Well, Ricky until until I'm tall. Ricky for short. Until I'm tall. Then I'll be Ricky Ticky Tavi. My full height, my whole name. Oh, nice to meet you, Darcy the Taylor and Bird. How do you do, Darcy the Taylor and Bird? I'm Ricky Ticky Tavi, the mongoose and mongoose. Oh my goodness, that is so cute. That's awesome. <laughs> that is so cute. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. <laughs> I can imagine the rest of the play is just going to be fun and funny and just engaging. Oh yes. my goodness. <laughs> so to do that character, are you naturally that bubbly and, you know... <laughs> yes, she is. Um, <laughs> she doesn't talk like that. I know. I, well, <laughs> um, I like to think so. Okay. <laughs> I, I like to think that I'm I'm friendly. I might not be quite as excited about everything as Ricky is. He's very over the top, very energetic, 
very draining. I have to take a lot of naps after rehearsal because <laughs> he does a lot of scurrying around and swinging oh. on things and jumping and running and oh, he has this famous battle cry that we just recently added some movement to and so anytime he gets scared or excited he goes ricky ticky ricky ticky ricky ticky and jumps and jumps and boxes and uh, so he he's a very energetic playful character lots of fun so much fun very draining i'm sure there are some parents that are going to be able to say that's my child i'm sure <laughs> prepare for an energetic role like that? Do you do your research by watching other movies or just by, you know, reaching down deep within mm -hmm. yourself? Well, a fun thing that Tim actually had us do is since, um, well, we're all playing characters that aren't like us. Four of the five of us are animals and then the one human is a human child. And so we... A fun thing that we had to do was do research on our, our animals or our human child. And so um, I looked up a lot of videos of like a mongoose fighting a cobra or a mongoose <laughs> um, pet like scurrying around a yard just to see um, how they walk, how they run, um, what they do when they're scared or excited and stuff. And so, um, and then my castmates did the same thing um, with muskrats and um, snakes and birds and so we all tried to do things um, to replicate their physicality mm -hmm. and then um, in some ways like character voices as well and so I decided since Ricky is a baby um, he would have a kind of high-pitched voice and then um, he's very excited and the Ricky tickies I, I thought he could really enunciate and uh, make the K's and the T's and consonants like that very clear and crisp. Okay. And so I try to do that in my voices as well. That is really awesome. You get a little growl out of the R or two. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is really awesome. And I want to say good morning to everyone that is watching um, our live stream. Sheila Higgins, Brendan Lastly, uh, Station Manager Lagenzi Kale, Dr. Sharice Jones Branch. Um, thank you so very much for everyone that is tuned in. We can't thank you all enough. I've had so much fun today. This has been like a great Monday. <laughs> I'm telling you, after the weekend I've had with assignments and other things, it's like, okay, Monday's here. But you have made this a totally awesome Monday. <laughs> thank you so much. Nice start the week. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you for sharing all the wonderful information. Um, and like you mentioned before, Arkansas State University is adding another course, uh, another aspect to the, the arts. I guess you say a dance, mm -hmm. some dance classes. So that is something to look out for. And this will start in the fall. They do, they start in the fall. All right, so anyone out there interested in learning how to dance, um, individual couples, um, go check out the curriculum and see what they have to offer. That still fun. got some openings. I'm, All right. <laughs> I'm just going to stick to what I'm doing and leave that. <laughs> Do the dancing and arts and other theater stuff, the theater to everybody else. <laughs> So thank you all so much for coming. Um, again, Ricky Tiki Tavi starts June 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. 10 a.m. is the first show. 2 p.m. is the second show for the 21st and 22nd. And 7.30 p.m. for the 23rd. Tickets are $5 and $7. $5 in advance, $7 at the door. Um, make sure to post this flyer on our Facebook and Instagram pages. So... Thank you so much, Satina. Thank you, Haley. Oh my God, you're going to be so wonderful in this Thank show. You for <laughs> Thank you. And I can't wait to see some of the teaser trailers that come out. So. Thank you all for tuning in. Listen, this has been your Monday edition of Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Don't forget to check out our station manager today on midday on KAIT. He will be promoting the upcoming stage play Love Has No Protection that is coming this Saturday at the Arkansas State University Student Union. So stay tuned. See you tomorrow. Have a very blessed day.